Hi, I'm Lisa. Welcome to Rocky Mountain Sewing and Vacuums July Sew Fun. I'm excited to show you the things that we have for you this month. Uh, first off, let's start off with a fun Sally Tomato pattern. You guys know we like these. Um, she has such great designs and really fabulous hardware. And this is called the Myrna Crossbody. And it is a slightly expanded version of her crossbody zipper pouch. And it has lots of pockets and great features. It has a slim profile, and I really like how it turned out. So let me show you a little bit more about this. This is my version of the Myrna crossbody. Um, it has a cork accent on the top two pockets and a cork a strap. And this is the first time that I have sewn with cork and I was surprised at really how easy it is to sew on and um, it's a very uh, flexible, it's easy to cut, it, the edges don't fray, it's just really a nice fabric and material to work with. Um, this little crossbody has a magnetic snap slip pocket on the back and a main zipper pocket with a slip pocket on the inside. And then it has two additional zip pockets across the front. And I'm going to tell you about a rookie mistake I made to help you avoid making the same mistake. I have made many, 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 many bags with linings over the years. And this is the first time I've ever made this mistake. But you can see this, um, pretty lining that I chose for inside this bag. And you can see the rookie mistake I made in the pockets on the front. I sewed them with the wrong side out. And I've never done, I mean, I sewed them with the right side out and the wrong side in when I sewed them. And I did not realize that I had made that mistake until I was turning the whole bag right side out after it was finished. So there was no way to go back and take the whole bag apart and, and change that. It's a little bit annoying that I did that on a bag that I really love, but I'm letting you know, even someone who has sewn a ton and made a ton of bags, it's easy to make mistakes. So pay attention and double check yourself when you're doing things like this. I think I got a little bit, um, because the two bags are sewn on top of each other and stacked like this, I mean the two zipper pockets, I, I don't know. There was something about when I was looking at the directions, I looked at it a little bit wrong or I flipped something around wrong and made that mistake. So learn of me. Use me as an object lesson. We of course have uh, zipper options for you. We have the black with, um, the antique bronze, and then we have the neutral kind of tan with the nickel. And we also have some fun pulls, the antique bronze, we have these big circle pulls. And of the nickel, we have the donut pulls. And then we also have the hardware for this bag in both the antique bronze and the nickel. So we have lots of fun options for you for making this bag. And like all Sally Tomato products, um, it made up really quickly. The directions are great. User error accepted. And um, I think it would be a great gift or a great bag for you. And I think it would be a great bag for traveling around. The next fun project I have for you is this um, Suki Sews in the hoop uh, little, they ca she calls it the uh, garden flower clutch. And it sews up entirely in the hoop, the whole thing. You don't have to do anything on your regular sewing machine and it makes up really, really nicely. It has this uh, pretty cork accent across the top and then you can just stitch out the flowers on here, choose something pretty for the lining and a coordinating zipper and of course it's lined. Um, it just really went together really, really quickly and easily. It was a fun project. I think it would make a darling gift. And um, her patterns always have great, 
great directions with color photographs, a really quick, fun little in the hoop project. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Svetlana Sotka. No, Sotak. I always say her name, I transpose her name a little bit. I have been following her, she's a maker in Finland, and I have been following her on Instagram for quite a while now, and I have actually um, downloaded and bought and made a number of her patterns, and I really like her, and she just published her first book, and I'm just so pleased. I love to be able to support makers that are, you know, doing their thing, making their stuff. And her book is called That Handmade Touch, 20 Simple Sewing Projects for You and Your Home. And she's got some really thoughtful, fun projects in here um, that you can make up. And she even has projects for your pets. She is a cat lover. You can see a picture of her kitty on the back. And she has a cute collar that you can make for your pet. Um, she has a toy little catnip fish how darling is that there's a little tent for your kitty a pet teepee and she has just a bunch of really fun things um, projects for you and for your home she has a section on techniques and tools that she loves and so let me dive in and show you some of the things I like in here the first one is this quilt as you go little zipper pouch and this is a technique that I have seen several people that I follow use this technique and I love the look of it and I have never done it, but it's very easy and really fun and addicting. So let me show you um, my version of this. So what you do is you start with a piece of batting and you pick a fabric to go in the middle that you're gonna start with. So like I picked this little green square for this side and you stitch it down with several like little quilting lines. And so this is a great way to go back to your um, scraps and use up little scraps and pieces of fabric. So then you get your next little piece of fabric that you're gonna sew onto that. So it's this little blue piece and you match the edges it doesn't really matter the size very much you match the edges and um, put them together right sides together stitch a, a seam right down there finger press it over and then stitch quilting lines across it and then you just keep building on as you go until you get this whole little quilted sort of really scrappy piece of fabric when you get to the part where there's like longer lines, you can sew like two pieces of fabric together first and then use them as a unit to sew down. Um, I love the scrappy look of it. I, it was really fun to do. It was just a fun new way to use up your fabric and make something really cool out of it. I did have um, leftover from another project, this little piece of rainbow zipper that I thought worked perfectly with the scrappiness of this um project and then it's lined of course and the seams on the inside are covered in binding and bound so you get this nice sort of curved top shape to this but she uses this technique to make placemats and uh, other small projects that I just think it's a really fun little technique. And if you need some sort of a satisfying little quick sewing project, it's something that you can just sit down with your pile of scraps and a piece of batting and start working on, and then decide what you're gonna use, use the resulting piece of quilted fabric for. So that technique is called Quilt As You Go, and she did, you can see hers right here. Um, it's just really, really fun. And I will definitely be doing it again. Let me see if I can find the uh, placemats that she uses that on. Maybe I cannot find it quickly, but it's really, really cute. Uh, oh, here we go, the scrappy placemats. So she did that quilt as you go technique. 
and she does hers all in low volume, real neutrals. I love the look of that, but it really isn't me, you guys know. This is me, not low volume. I'm not all about low volume. Another fun project in here is this little wall pocket um, that she uses these to organize her craft room. And this is gonna be great in my craft room, which is a work in progress, but it's really coming along. And um, super useful, it has this little leather handle so that it will hang off of a hook or a peg and kind of hang flat against the wall and use it for all different kinds of organizational items. I think these would be darling in a kid's room for um, various kinds of organizational things, little toys or diapers or a package of wipes or something like that. And she sewed the leather handles into the seam, the leather handle, but I used rivets because I have become such a fan of rivets and I put them on everything that you can possibly rivet. So um, this was a fun, really quick little project and an, again, a really fun little scrap buster. Another thing that she includes in this book that I have been really interested in getting to learn about is um, Sashiko embroidery. And it's really kind of having a bit of a moment right now. I don't know if you guys have seen it around, but it's being done quite a bit. And she does two different styles on her big throw pillows. And I've been kind of interested in doing this and I've watched some YouTube tutorials and kind of looked at her stuff and I just like the look of it a lot. And so I brought a piece of it to show you that I've been working on and I wanna tell you about what I've learned and the tools and materials that you use for it. So um, you have to use a specific kind of thread. And I have heard this, the name of this embroidery pronounced a number of different ways uh, because I don't speak Japanese, so I never know which syllable the emphasis goes on. But um, one of the men that I follow on YouTube that does a lot of this, he's a Sashiko designer and does beautiful, beautiful work. Um, that's how he pronounces it, Sashiko, and he's Japanese. And so I decided to go with his pronunciation. So you use this specific kind of thread. And unlike regular embroidery floss that you separate the strands and you just embroider with, um, depending on what you're doing, one or two or three strands of the floss, Sashiko thread is uh, twisted differently and it's designed to be used without separating the strands comes in a million colors. I brought white for you here. You need specific kinds of Sashiko needles. And so I found a really good variety pack that has short needles and long needles. And depending on the project you're doing, if you have lots of longer straight lines, you want a longer needle. If you're doing shorter straight lines or curves, you want a shorter needle. So I have a little variety pack of sashiko uh, needles and it uses a special kind of thimble and this little leather thimble i don't know if you can see it it looks like a kind of like a, a arch it looks like an arch and on the back it has elastic and you slip it on your over this finger and it goes all the way down and the leather it's leather the leather arch goes right here on your hand and you use that part of your hand to push the needle through. And let me show you what I mean. So this is an in-process pro in project that I've been working on a little bit. And so with Sashiko embroidery, you it takes a while. This is, I'm very much a beginner. But what you want is short stitches, they say about the length of a grain of rice. Many of mine are too long. I have to work on getting them a little shorter. And that the space between the stitches is one third the length of the stitch. So um, you can kind of just eyeball how, how far apart your stitches are. So you can see mine are not perfect by any means. I'm very much a beginner at this. 
So you put, so like when you're doing your straight line and where lines cross, you want to leave it open. So you want to try to end your stitches and begin your stitches so that anywhere where you have lines crossing, you don't have the threads crossing. You have an open space there. Um, so you would bring your needle up from the bottom and when it comes to the top, you just do this with your needle and ideally you do the whole line of stitching. So that's why you push the bottom of the needle with your hand like this and you manipulate the fabric with your left hand. I'm right-handed, so you would manipulate it with your left hand and push the needle through going in and out and in and out. Um, it takes some practice to get that technique down. I am not very good at it yet. One of the things that I um, learned that I would do differently is uh, in her book for the pillow, she has you cut a piece of fusible fleece and fuse it to the back of the pillow before you do the embroidery. I would have done that after because having that fleece on the back has made it very difficult to do the embroidery for me. And when I have watched other tutorials online and stuff like that, nobody does that. So um, I would do that differently. But I did find a really amazing tool that I wanna show you. I don't know if you can see the lines that I have drawn um, the, for where the embroidery is going to go, but we, all of us who are sewists, have the same problem in that we're always searching for the perfect marking tool for dark fabrics. And we have had several different kinds that we have brought over the years for you to try, and I'm, I have tried lots of different kinds. There isn't one that I have found that's perfect for every application. And when you look at different people who do uh, sashiko embroidery, they all have their favorite ones that they use. But I did find one that I really, really like. And this is called the Miracle Chalk Chubby Crayon. And it's um, this fat crayon that you can use to draw the lines and it disappears with heat. And it really does work. I used it on all the things that I made this month that I needed to mark on dark fabric and it really, really works really, really well. Um, you can sharpen it with a regular pencil sharpener or with a knife, and I think it would last a very, very long time. It's this nice, big, fat, long crayon. So that's what I use to mark my lines, and it worked really well for me, and I think that it will work well for you as well. Okay, you all know that I love Anagram of Noodle Head. I don't even know how many of her patterns I have done for Sew Fun in the past. I just love her aesthetic and her patterns so much. She just came out with a, a booklet called Everyday Essentials that is so awesome. It includes three different patterns in this. Three in one, three hits in one. I just love her stuff. The first pattern in here is called, she calls the wax and wool tote. It's just a very handsome, very good looking tote. Um, and my version of that that I made is this. And I used a canvas that I have that has like positive things, it says positive things on it. Things like gratitude. I think I can, I think I can. Keep a thankful heart stuff like that and then on the bottom it's i used a wax canvas she uses that a lot in her patterns it has a uh, two pockets on the front really nice big deep pockets and a split pocket a slip pocket on the inside that i reinforced with rivets of course um, and leather handles that are riveted on and it's just a really nice big size um, it's very uh, uh, usable for lots and lots of things. And I think it is, depending on the fabric you choose, I mean, it could look very professional 
I mean, some of her choices are really nice. And of course, with all of her patterns, the directions are really good, easy to follow. She gives you lots of different options. Um, there's options for a strap that is a fabric strap or a sewn-in strap. I attach mine with rivets. I like the way that looks a lot. Um, the next pattern is here is called the Petal Pouch Set. And it's this nice curved pouch set, a small and a large. And here are my versions of that. And again, super, super useful. Um, of course, like all of her stuff, it's lined and uh, goes together really nicely. I like the shape of this. It's quite sophisticated. And again, these are really useful for yourself or they would make a great gift. What a great little gift. Goes together really, really quickly. Um, the last pattern in her book is for her minimalist wallet, which also comes in two sizes. This is her minimalist wallet pattern. I'll show you, she has a better picture of both sizes of this. So large and small both have a zipper pocket and slots for credit cards and things like that. The larger one will also easily fit your phone. It closes with a snap that's on a leather uh, strip to close the wallet up. So the small one has one and the large one has two. And I thought it'd be great if you attach like a wrist strap to this. It would make a great little carry and go little clutch so that it would be easy to hold on to. Um, so again, three patterns in this one little pattern and a great value and her really, really cool designs. I love Anagram. Her things are great. Um, I, because I like rivets and uh, fastenings and things like that so much and I use them more and more, I just love the finish it gives to my final projects, I'm amassing quite a collection. And then I found this great little storage tower. And so in here on this tower are five of these little donut shaped storage compartments that open up and each one of these has six wedge shaped compartments inside to organize the different sizes of things that you use for sewing. I think that these would work great for all different kinds of hardware. I think they would work really nice for buttons. I think they'd work really good for uh, pins. I think they'd look, work good for grommets and snaps and rivets and um, just all different kinds of things. And to keep it organized and in a compact way and that you don't have to open up everything to get the one thing that you need. That's the other thing I really like. Um, I have different like flat boxes that have cubbies in them, but you have to open the whole big whole lid to get all the little cubbies and then heaven forbid if something jostles that because then you have a, a nightmare. But this is much more contained. Um, and it fits in a different kind of space. So depending on how you're organizing things, this helps you to utilize your storage space a little better so you don't have any wasted space. So this has been a good little uh, notion, little item for, for me. Uh, the next thing I wanna show you is this cute Funky Friends factory. It's called Gertie the Gecko. And we've had Funky Friends factory things before over the years. Um, their designs are really, really cute. But this is a heat pack toy. That's what it's designed for. And you use poly pellets in it. So let me show you this cute little uh, gecko that Mallory stitched up for her little peanut. Um, the, the body, the tail, the nose, and the feet all have poly pellets in them. And then they're stuffed with polyfill on top of the pellets to hold it all in there and make the body soft. 
but this gives them a little bit of weight. So when Delaney is like hugging this at night, it almost has the effect of like a weighted blanket because it has just a little bit of weight to it. The other thing that's cool about these poly pellets is that you can heat this up in the microwave and the pellets will hold heat so it's nice and warm if they need that comfort. Or they will also hold the cold. So you can put this in the freezer and then these will be nice and cool and they, they hold that for quite a while. Um, stitches up really quickly and really darling. And of course, if you make it out of minky, then they just love, 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 love it. And you can see this one has been very well loved. Also, of note, uh, Mallory used safety eyes for the eyeballs, so they will not come out and be accidentally swallowed by some little person who's really, really loving this. So this has been a fun little project. And poly pellets, man, so many great uses for those. Um, another fun kind of little add-on item we have for you this month is uh, this thousand piece puzzle it's called Picket, Picket Fence Pretties, and it's quilts hanging on a picket fence. And I actually worked this puzzle this spring when it was really snowy one week, and it was nice to just have this on my table and be working this puzzle, and it was a fun one to put together because you can look for the different patterns of the quilts and Puzzles are fun. I like puzzles. And so here's a fun little quilting puzzle for you guys. Um, let's see, let's talk about this embroidery here. Um, Deb in the office has done some OESD embroidery for us this month. And this first disc is called Holiday Couture. And it has some really fun designs. And what she did with them is um, she made them into either, they could be either very generous mug rugs. I was thinking they'd be great for like a bowl of soup or like a small little um, trivet or something you could put something hot on. And so she pulled these into her software and changed them just slightly so that they would kind of fit the space she wanted and stitched them out and they're real pretty. And I think she did a fun job with this. Um, she also did this Winter Wonderland Ornaments disc. And this has lots of designs on it. Um, a snail and fruit and a couple really cute little hedgehogs and a squirrel and a mushroom, all kinds of things. But she did something very clever with this. She stitched some of these out and she turned it into a mobile to hang over a baby crib. And I thought, oh, what a clever girl. What a clever idea. Um, she did like a bird and a birdhouse and a bunny. There's a snowflake, a different bunny, a cardinal. And she just used an old embroidery hoop that she had at home and drilled holes in it. And I mean, this was just totally put together with stuff she had on hand and made this cute little mobile. So I thought that's a clever, a clever use of an embroidery design. And now that you see this, I bet you're thinking of all the fun embroidery designs that you have that you're thinking of something else to do with and you can make a mobile. We have a really great pair of OESD duck build scissors for you. Um, of course, they're angled so that you can get in under your embroidery. And these are so great for applique, for trimming off um, the fabric around your applique pieces when you are embroidering. Um, super, super useful. And then I also have a fun uh, thing for you. I don't know if you remember about a year ago, Kimberbell came out with these um, slat bands that are labeled to go around your stabilizers and all of your embroidery um, stuff that you use. And they came out with um, uh, add-on stabilizers and this one includes 
sticky back tear away, iron away topping and project batting. Because that first set, I love them, but I didn't quite have enough for all the various uh, tubes of stabilizer that I have. And so they came out with a, a few more to add on to your collection. So you probably want to pick up some of those. Um, we have a couple different garments to tell you about today. And the first one is the Fira dress or top. And so this pattern um, makes up very quickly. It's really summery. I think it's super forgiving and flattering for lots of different body types. And it can be either a top or a dress. And I made it into the top and I made it out of a linen cotton blend. So it feels really nice and it's kind of summery. It has uh, uh, this v-neck here and uh, the seams are French seams, so everything is nicely finished on the inside. It has uh, um, gathers here on the shoulders and then across the back yoke. And then it just kind of floats away a little bit. This pattern also includes adjustments for larger bust sizes. So that's super useful. So there's lots of uh, ability to customize this pattern to fit anybody who needs any customization. And like I said, it made, um, made up very quickly. The dress also has pockets because every dress should have pockets. Um, another really great tool I found is the Measure Up Multi-Tool. This is from Sew to Grow. And it has lots and lots of different measurements on it and cutouts on it and markings on it. It can be used as a seam gauge. It is a quick seam guide. It has small cutouts on the edges for that. You can use it for hemming, for folding up and pressing up. It also can be used as a needle guide and it has um, holes in it that you can put your needle down and then position and see, make sure that your seams are really, really accurate for accurate sewing and it's made out of bamboo um, and it it's just a handy dandy little tool to have uh, we've brought back swedish tracing paper i know we've used it a ton before but it just is so useful and i feel like i go through mine pretty quickly because um, i use it for so many things when i'm tracing patterns so we have that for you today uh, the other pattern that we have is this jaylee uh, Nikita uh, top or swing dress and this makes up super super cute it's designed specifically to be made with athletic fabrics performance fabrics and this is the tank top version okay this is the tank top version and the back of it's super cute. Look at this. Um, Mallory made this. She really fell in love with this. And she used her regular sewing machine, her serger, and a cover stitch machine. Mallory just got a cover stitch machine. I'm so jealous. Um, she said, however, you can make this whole thing easily on your regular sewing machine. You do not need to use all those different machines like she did. Um, she also made a little dress for Delaney out of this same pattern. I just think it turned out so darling. And of course, out of this same cute fabric, she made a little outfit for one of Delaney's dolls for her so that they can be matching. And I really love that because my mom used to make me matching clothes with my doll and make my doll clothes. And I did that for Mallory and now Mallory's doing that for Delaney. So I just really love that. Um, super, super fun to kind of pay that forward and continue on those really fun traditions. Okay, I really fell in love with this Wonky Houses series from Fabric Confetti. 
Um, and this is the haunted Halloween version. There's a bunch of different wonky house uh, embroidery designs that they have. And I just fell in love with this. Um, it can be made into a banner or there's a way to make it into a table runner. And it is designed with, um, the designs are made for applique. So you have pieces of applique for all the different house components and the ghosts and things like that. Or you can do it with straight embroidery. And I chose the embroidery. And I really, really am happy with how it turned out. I just think it's gonna be super fun for Halloween. And all of the ghosts, I embroidered with glow-in-the-dark thread. So I think that's gonna be super fun. One really awesome um, thing that I found for you guys, and you can see it on the pattern here, if you're making this into a banner, I have two different really fun holders for you. One is a pumpkin and one is a witch's hat with a spider hanging off of it. I just thought those were super fun. So fun little Halloween banners um, and the holders that go with them. All right, and then finally, I have this fun booklet of modern holiday table runners and it includes the patterns for six different table runners to go with holidays and they're really really cute really fun and I just loved them and one of the things that I found that made making these really awesome is this amazing ruler this is called the it's by Creative Grid, so it's non-slip. It's called the Stripology Extra Large Ruler. And what this ruler has is it has um, openings, slits, every half inch that go all along the ruler. So you can make your own jelly rolls if you want out of your own fabric. Um, but what I loved using it for, and there's lots of uses for this, when you are cutting pieces for a quilt or a project like some of these table runners, you can, and it calls for, you know, like a strip of three different fabrics that is with the fabric two and a half inches wide. And so you can just, you know, you need 10 of those. It's really easy to center your fabric and line up, you know, straight on underneath this ruler then just gently push your hand down on it like all creative goods grids rulers it has that uh, rough surface on the back so it won't slip then you just put your rotary cutter into the opening and you can just really quickly cut as many as you need of however wide you need in half inch increments and then what you can do so often when making a quilt or something, it'll say like subcut three of those two and a half inch strips into rectangles that are two and a half by four and a half. So you can then uh, turn your ruler, line it back up on your two and a half inch strips, and then just go through and cut them all really, really quickly. It is a huge, huge time saver. And it's nice to be able to cut them quickly and accurately and, um, like all creative grids, there's lots of fun YouTube tutorials showing you how to use this ruler. And the instructions are also really, really good. I think creative grids does a really great job of coming up with uh, rulers that are kind of like the right tool for the right job and teaching you how to use them. So here are my two table runners that I made from that book. I did the Valentine one and I, it was a fun little scrap buster for me. It was fun to be able to go through and find all the red and pink fabrics to uh, make the hearts out of. And when I was quilting it, I chose to quilt each half of the heart in straight lines, but they're going different ways on each half of the different hearts. Um, so I just kind of liked that effect. And then I also did the Christmas one and the ruler was really great 
for doing the Christmas one because I had to cut strips and then the strips needed to be sub cut and I needed it out of different fabrics. Um, it just worked really, really well. The final little item that I wanted to tell you about are these fine line glue applicator tips. And these are designed to fit on the top of a bottle of Elmer School glue. And they have a really skinny little point with a cover. And what these are for is, I don't know if you knew this, but you can use washable school glue to glue based things. And you set it with your iron and it'll dry almost immediately. You just need a tiny little bit, so hence you have a skinny little tip for those. And then it will hold it there as long as you need it to. You can sew over it. It's very um, user friendly and then it just washes away really easily. So these are a great little thing. And since I have these, I'm finding all kinds of things to quickly glue based um, to make it so much easier to hold it together as I'm getting ready to sew stuff, like, like binding, things like that on like the edge of something like this. It's just so, so quick to do. Um, really fun, lots of fun little gadgets. So I hope we have given you something that inspires you to make something for yourself or for someone that you care about and happy sewing.